Hi, my name is Frédéric Boucher, so that's me on the picture. I'm currently a postdoc at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in the United States. During my PhD thesis at the University of Liège in Belgium, I was involved in the development of an interactive database which summarizes the knowledge acquired about the Florentine Regulation in the model plant species Arabidopsis thaliana. This database, which takes advantage of the new web technologies, is called FlorID. But first, let's see why understanding how plant flora is crucial. Plants are essential in human nutrition. Wheat alone constitute more than 20% of the calories consumed worldwide. Now, if you consider only the 12 more consumed crops, they account for 75% of human nutrition. In addition to that, animals are also partially fed through plants. Overall, Plants account for a huge majority of the nutrition resources of humanity. In most cases, the part of the plants consumed are either the fruits or the seeds. Altogether, in the context of the ever-increasing world population, a better understanding of the molecular mechanisms controlling the initiation of flowering is crucial. It is therefore not surprising that a lot of efforts converge toward the analysis of agronomically important plants, such as rice, wheat, and maize. However, over the last 20 years, another plant, which is not a crop, was even more studied. This is Arabidopsis thaliana. You may wonder why people would direct their efforts toward this plant. Well, you will understand why. In research, the amount of space required to grow plants is an important consideration. Maize plants, for example, are rather big, reaching most of the times 2 meters, sometimes even 4. To grow these plants does require a lot of space. Now, let's consider Arabidopsis. It is actually a very small plant, whose rather diameter does not exceed 10 centimeters. In addition to that, it has several very interesting properties, among which a very small genome, a wide natural variability, and a rapid life cycle. Overall, because of these advantages, many biologists choose Arabidopsis thaliana as the reference plant species. And as understanding how plant flora is crucial, it is not surprising that many articles are published each year on this topic. Indeed, if you perform a simple research in PubMed using the keywords Arabidopsis and Fluorine, you can see that, currently, more than 300 papers are published yearly on this topic. It makes a huge amount of data. Such an amount, actually, that it may be difficult to deal with. As many others, we were confronted to this issue, but we wanted to propose a way to easily give access to this information. Our purpose was to summarize the knowledge acquired about the Florentine Regulation in Arabidopsis thaliana. We wanted to create a convenient way to give access to this information, using interactive schemes, which was actually made possible by the recent web-based technologies. With Guillaume Lobet, Pierre Toquin, and Claire Perrieu, we developed this interactive database of Florentine Regulation, which is called FlorID. So, how did we create FlorID? Well, with a lot of work. First, we read many literature reviews, more than 130. We collected a comprehensive documentation in PubMed, and we used other databases, such as Uniprot and Ter. Together, we used the collected data to create a list of 306 flooring time genes. For each of them, we downloaded a representative list of publications, about 3,000 in total. We used a text mining software to create both a database of flowing time genes, but also interactive schemes. These two types of data were combined into a freely accessible website, www.floor-id.org. So, here's the front page of our website. Let's see how it works. On the right-hand side, you see that you can have access to different types of data either tables showing the flowing time genes, or, more interestingly, interactive schemes. Let's start by looking at an overview of the flowing time regulation. You can see, as represented by the rectangles of different colors, the distinct pathways controlling flowing time in Arabidopsis thaliana. 
it is noteworthy that those pathways converge toward a small subset of important flooring time genes that eventually control the initiation of floor production. Every element on the scheme is clickable, and by clicking on these elements, you will have access to additional information, such as data about the specific genes or publications showing an interaction between two genes. You can also click on each pathway to obtain more information about them. Let's see how the photoperiodic pathway regulates flooring. So, here is the photoperiodic pathway which allows the initiation of floor production when the day length increases so that plants will flower in spring when conditions are favorable for successful reproduction. You can see that when I said that flooring time regulation was complex, I was not joking. Once again, you can click on every element of the scheme and have access to additional information about every gene. You can also have access to additional schemes showing more specific processes. Let's give it a try. The upper part of this scheme represents the time cross-regulation of crucial throwing time regulators, namely CO and FT. The lower part of the schemes depicts additional mechanisms involved in the control of FT expression. Let's have a look at the information given for a gene when you click on it. You see that you can have access to information about the protein function, the phenotype of the mutant, etc. But you can also have access to many different additional information by clicking on View Gene Details on the top of the right panel. In this part of the website, which is probably one of the most useful ones, you have access to all the information contained in the database for the gene you are interested in. This includes the phenotype of the mutant, the interactor of the proteins, the targets of this protein, but also the key publications related to this gene. It is noteworthy that, wherever you are on our website, we add a direct link to every references, more than 1600, so that you can easily consult the original article. So that's it! You now see how our database works! Thank you for watching this video and also a big up to external diffusion for their work in promoting science. If you have any question, do not hesitate to contact us.